this is Ashwin Prabhu. Um, in today's session on uh, Integration Monday, I'll be speaking about uh, some of the inter interesting features in Logic App, like how you will chain Logic Apps together, different way, different way of uh, chaining the Logic Apps together, and some of the new features that's been recently announced um, in the space of Logic App. Let's see the agenda for today. Um, the agenda, I'll start with introducing myself, I'll say about me. And as I said, there are different ways to um, chain logic apps. Um, I'm here on, on this session, I'm going to show you the demo on three different ways. Um, starting with how to start a logic app uh, from another logic app. Uh, nested logic apps, how you can chain a logic app to, uh, together, how you can call a logic app uh, from another logic app, get the response from the logic app into the parent logic app handle the response from the child uh, logic app in the parent logic app. And another way of um, chaining the logic apps together is by using the publish subscribe way, uh, the familiar way that we used to do um, in Bistock server, a similar way to chain the logic apps. And then I'll show you a quick demo on um, do until looping, a uh, feature recently added in, in the logic app days. And also I'll show how to use C-Shop APA app, another uh, feature that's been recently added in. Before we end the session, we'll have a slot for questions and answers. So if you have any questions, you may ask during this time. Who am I? Um, as you all know, some of, uh, of you know that I'm an integration MVP for the last couple of years, 2015 and 2014. I'm an independent consultant uh, based in UK, uh, specialized in BizTalk Server and Services. Uh, I've been working in BizTalk Server for last uh, more than 12 years, in fact, and I've worked almost on all versions of BizTalk Server. Um, I write blogs, uh, www.fortuvis.com is my website. Um, I write blogs uh, on the things that I work on. The demos that I'm going to show today, uh, it's, uh, it's just an, the intention of the demo is to show how this can be achieved. The step-by-step step by, step by step, step step guidance can be seen on my blogs. I'll be writing a blog on the about the demos that I've done today uh, in a couple of weeks' time, and you will you can able to see those blogs in detail um, on my blog side. So please do uh, come back and visit my blog for the step-by-step -step guidance on the demos which I'm, which I'm planning to do today. Um, Ashwin.prabhu is my, Ashwin.com is my email ID. Um, my Twitter, Twitter handler and the LinkedIn website URL is MR Ashwin Prabhu. Let's move on to the today's session. Um, this is going to be, it's all about demo. Um, I'll be talking while uh, I'll sort of leaving and uh, giving you a running commentary on what's going to be. Um, yeah, so let's start with the uh, different one of the different ways of uh, calling a logic app or chaining a logic app. As I said, logic app can be chained together to by different means, uh, different ways. And one of the ways is to start a logic app from another logic app. This is similar to the start orchestration shape that we have in uh, Bistock Server. I've just used the shock or, you know, start orchestration shape just to make people familiarize with the um, with the way they handle things. I know. Uh, Familiar with, familiarized way that they are familiar in, you know, in doing things in the stock server. But it is not in terms of the underlying protocol, um, protocols asynchronous nature. Uh, it is similar in terms of flow of control in the invoking and other logic app. The parent logic app proceeds beyond the invocation without waiting for the invoked or the child logic app to finish its works. Well, it does provide you the modularity approach for your logic app. Though APA app and the logic app are based on microservices architecture, discrete reusable components with uh, HTTP and or REST endpoints, these discrete components can be assembled together to form a composite service, a modular service, um, uh, a, a common shared service. As we normally do in our um, workflows or in our middleware, we may have a, a common service like exception handler or an auditing service which could be called, um, which could be reused from other orchestrations or other pro the processes in your middleware. Similar way, in the demo that I'm going to show today, I have two logic apps. Uh, logic app one is a message validator logic app where I have an hybrid file folder. Um, the file will be received by the logic app. Uh, it will be validated against the predefined schema. If the received message is valid, it will move and drop the file into another folder. Otherwise, it will call and an, uh, it will call or make an HTTP post to call another logic app. 
in this case I have in common logic app or a, a modular approach, I've given the modular approach to this logic app by means of an exception handler. Um, in logic app 2, the exception handler is going to receive the message, intercept the message that it received and see if the received message severity ID is greater than 5, send an email to one person or send an email with different content in it. If it is lesser than 500, send an email, no email with a different content in it. Though I've you no know, in the diagram I've called it as a call except no exception handler. I'm going I'm just going to make an HTTP post. Um, that's why when I started this uh, slide I've said it is similar to start orchestration but not in way of asynchronously in nature. Since I'm going to make an HTTP post internally the underlying protocol is still going to give me an HTTP 202 as a response back but it posts a message and then and let the other process carry on uh, with the process. Um, let's see the demo. Let's see the you know, things in action. Um, I'll move on to my virtual mission. So I have two logic apps. As I showed, uh, logic app 1 and logic app 2. Uh, before I go show you the primary, the logic app 1, let's concentrate, um, let's you know, spend some time for a while on the uh, the common logic app, the, the child one, which child process, the, the workflow which we are going to trigger. I have two actions on this logic app. Um, either one of these actions will execute based on the condition. Uh, before I go in detail into the condition, if you can notice, I made the logic app to run manually. And then if you go, if you see the conditions in the logic app, I'll zoom in. If you see the conditions in one of the actions, it says, um, trigger output severity ID. The severity ID in this case, if it is less than 500, execute this condition. If it is greater than 500, if it is greater than 500, execute this condition. So the second thing to notice here is is, is that though I've made the um, though I've made the logic app to execute manually, I still use the expression not trigger. Here the trigger is going to be the 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 HTTP post message that I, that's, that's actually triggered this logic app. So these are the two things that are crucial for, for starting a process. Before I call this logic app up, before I trigger this logic app from the parent or logic app, I'll show how this can be tested um, in, in this OPY. It's important to know this because this will should give you an idea of what's happening behind the screen or what are the things that are required to invoke this logic app. Uh, the two things that is required to uh, to invoke the logic app is obviously the URL, uh, the access endpoint for this logic app, and the access and uh, the primary access key um, for this logic app. Uh, these two values can be easily accessed from you know, from the properties of the logic app. This can be you know, retrieved from this place. We go to the, the settings of this logic app, either clicking here or clicking on this place. Click on this. We we'll get the properties of the logic app. I'm going to change the subscription ID after this um, session. Anyway, the one what we have here is this. So these two values, the access endpoint, which is going to be, which is going to form a URL for the logic app, and the access primary key, which can be used to, uh, to create an authorization token. I'll show in detail. So let's go first for the constructing the, uh, the URL. Uh, so copy this content. The URL should be of format like this. The access endpoint URL. It should be appended with this value. What it what it does say is execute this URL by an action run by passing in the parameter, the API version, and this. This is the version of the logic app that we execute now. So, so I'll show this in the postman. So I have the URL. The URL is nothing but the access URL, um, the access endpoint appended with this value. Right, I'm going to trigger the logic app manually. Uh, so I need to pass some authentication keys, uh, some headers that I have to pass to this HTTP post. The headers are the content type and the authorization key. Content type is nothing but what type of content I'm going to post, either JSON or the XML or whatever way the, uh, the, uh, the content that you are going to post. The other one is the authorization token. The, we got to generate the authorization token. Um, the, as I said, 
there are two values that we are that are important in it. One is the access key. The other one is the primary I access endpoint. I'll show it again. We use the access endpoint for constructing the URL, and we have to access use this primary access key now. Uh, we have to base encode uh, no, no encode this to the base encode uh, no base 64 versions. This can be done by two means or different means. In fact, the quite popular ones are by using the ARM clients, uh, ARM client tool from uh, uh, an excellent tool from David Debo. You can download this tool from here, and there are instructions to generate that. Otherwise, the simpler approach is use a base encoder from Bing. Uh, this is the URL which will enable you to create the uh, the base encoder for the values that you are going to give. Um, so here we have to provide default is a username um, um, for the logic app in this case. So I'll be copy this. I'll be copying this primary key, primary access key, and then click encode. This will give you the uh, the base 64 encoder, which we which you have to use on your logic app. So I'll be using some basic authentication. So I'll be using the encoder value here and then base encoder key here. I'm going to test a message now. So by clicking, um, I have a body. The body is going to be, um, this is the body, this is the message that I can construct on my parent uh, no, parent logic app. The parent logic app is going to post a similar message which has got the severity ID in it and the error message in it. Uh, the severity ID, as you, as you saw uh, a minute ago, is going to be validated at the conditions of the actions. And based on the value, I'm going to send emails. So if I send a message, it will post a message and I'll be getting 202. Um, I posted a message, I triggered this logic app, so I should have received an email. Let's see whether I've received the email or not. In a while that I'll be, I'll show you that, I've just received an email. I've just received an email. This is the email that I've received um, just now, uh, a minute ago. It contains the details. This shows us, this shows the way how you can invoke this child process. As the keep, the, I, I wanted to show this because, as I showed, it required the access endpoint to trigger the logic app and the uh, the headers that you got to construct. Let's see how this can be kind of called from the parent logic app. This is the parent logic app. Um, as I was explaining in the demo diagram, um, I have an uh, hybrid um, on permissive folder. Uh, in, I'll be dropping in a folder. The message will be validated using this XML validator. Um, if it is a valid message, it will move on to this uh, the other file connector. Otherwise, a message will be received by this action. This action is what matters to us. In case of um, an invalid message, message will be posted to this URL. I'll uh, zoom in to see the values. So I'll be posting the message to this URL. Um, URL is the one which I've used the same the URL which I've used in the postman. And the condition, as you can see, if the body of the XML result, if the body of the XML validators result is false, I have to execute this condition, and I will have given the headers um, that I that I gave in the postman here, and body is going to be the one which I construct here. So I receive a message. It's if if I give an analogy of how this is no, no, how this has been done in the BizTalk server, you construct a message. Um, here I constructing the severity of the message. Um, let me show it in detail. So you post an HTTP action, you construct a message. The, the construct is nothing but the output. Um, I intercept the output of the XML validator. This is the one which I construct. It's nothing but the concatenation of the uh, the outputs uh, which I've received uh, from the XML validator, the error description from the XML validator, which will be the part of the uh, error information value. And I'm passing the value of the severity ID as 100. As I had two actions in the uh, child logic app, 
um, one for layer greater than 500 severity ID or the one for lesser than 500 one of the uh, no, logic apps action will pick up and then send the email so as you as you saw just to as just I, as I gave an, an analogy I'm making a post to another child process by constructing a message the the URL is exactly the same which I posted on the HTTP post and the header is again the same which I used on the uh, no, HTTP post to so just to get you know, refresh you back the URL is this and header is this the content type and the uh, the basic um, the author the author authorization code which uh, the token which we use to trigger the logic app so as I said a file will be I'll post a file now and then we'll show things in action see I will show how the parent logic app is getting triggered uh, by the child logic app using this HTTP post. I have an uh, I have an XML file uh, which is which is an invalid XML file. Um, I have one of the contents um, not in line with the schema what I have defined. I'm going to drop this into one of the uh, folders, the folder which my um, receive uh, file connector is uh, polling into. Um, it's been po it's been scheduled to poll for every minute. While this happens, um, someone could ask me the question: um, What is the difference between using an HTTP post to call a child process by making the child process manually triggered to the uh, the other way of doing things is using an HTTP listener action in the child process? I could have an HTTP listener as a trigger, and then um, call an HTTP trigger from the my parent logic. App. What is the difference? Behavior-wise, they all same. In my other uh, demos. So before I continue, I posted a message now. The message has been received. See the run action. The message has been received. It's executed now. I have an XML validator. Since it is not a valid file, it has not gone to the file connector. The message is being posted to the child process, the child logic app. The child logic app is this. If I see the line execution of this, as you can see, it's already been triggered. Which I send an email to one of the uh, no, one of the email. Let go to my email ID and see what is the status of the email that I've received. The second email, the, the first one is a test, and this is the second one which I've received. Uh, it's going to contain the the information, the error information that's been passed on from the child, from the parent to the child. These details are constructed from the parent. This is the error information from the XML uh, validator action in the parent child. Well, I can use the, the XML validator error information to construct the message which I posted. Um, to the child logic app, child the logic app received it, validated the action based on the CVRT ID and sent this email. As yes, going back to the um, uh, the other way that we could use in the child logic app, instead of having an HTTP trigger, sorry, yes, instead of making it as manually executing the logic app. I could also have an HTTP listener as an action, and from my parent logic app, I could trigger this HTTP action. I'm, go, I'm doing that in my other examples. But what is the difference? Behavior was, as I said, there is no difference. But the way in which you handle the things are slightly different. By, by using this way, you are actually triggering the logic app URL, um, the, the logic app endpoint in the uh, in the HTTP action, we post, we retrieve the access endpoint, constructed the URL, passed in the the, uh, the, the header bodies, and the author, authorization code. That's the way to trigger the logic app as an you know, as an entity. Whereas by calling the HTTP listener in the child process is something like calling the, an API app host, uh, you know, calling one of the you know API actions within the logic app. You are not calling the whole entity, but you are calling an an action, an APA action within the entity. That's the difference. By this way, you are actually triggering the URL of the logic app. Whereas by having an HTTP listener on the child orchestra and the child logic app, you are actually calling the um, the HTTP listener's URL, not logic app where 
where it's been you know, designed or kept in or deployed in. That's the difference. So behavior wise, it's all the same. Uh, uh, that's what I'm going to show in my um, next demos. Let's go back to my slide and show uh, One minute. Sorry, one minute. I think my function key got locked. Yeah. So that's the first logic of that what we what we saw, and um, and in the second way, when I'm going to call a logic app, I call this as a nested logic app, where I have a logic app one, which is again is going to be a message validator. But I'm going to call another logic app. In this case, I'm going to call the logic app, the child process workflow, execute the, um, uh, the child process on the message that's been passed on from logic app one in the logic app two, return the response back to the logic app one, and send the response um, from the logic app, the child process, to the folder. So as an example, I'll be receiving a message, an employee message, which will have an age of the employee in it. I'll validate the message, and uh, once it's been validated, um, I'll send the message uh, to another logic app, which is an age validator. Um, I made things simple so that it's easy to understand the process. The crux of the logic here is um, how a message is being sent across from parent to the child and back uh, back to child uh, back to parent from child. Now this response is handled in the parent or logic app. Yes. Uh, the message validator will validate the received message from logic app one, the parent logic app. Check whether the age is a minor, age is greater than 18. If it is greater than 18, it is a major. Otherwise, a minor. Uh, construct the message with a minor value in it. Return the response back to the parent one logic app, and then drop the uh, logic app into the, uh, the file folder in logic app one. So, as you can see, I pass on the message from logic app one to logic app two. I do some process. The outcome of the process is written back to Logic App One. Logic App One is going to carry the the output of the logic the, the response into another for the other into another file drop. The Logic App One is going to execute or use the response that is received from the output uh, of the Logic App Two. This is similar to the way that we have done things in call in call orchestration shape. In this talk, we call an orchestration or another workflow process. Um, synchronously, it will wait for the response to come. No, it, uh, the parent orchestration or the, will wait for the response from the child orchestration to complete, with, get the response from the child, and then carry on with the response that it received from the child in the parent orchestration. Similar behavior, similar functionality. How we can be, uh, how this can be achieved, is what I'm trying to show here in this nested logic app. Let's go back to my virtual uh, mission and then uh, see the demo in action. Meanwhile, um, as I said, the demos. I'm just. I'm not writing things on fly. Um, I thought it would. It would be unnecessary to spend your time just by typing the expressions. I have predefined demos. As I said, I'll be writing the blog spot on, on a step by step guidance on how this can be achieved. I'll have a blog about uh, the start orchestration calls or start logic app call logic app on all the demos as a blog with step by step guidance on how to do that. So. This is the parent uh, logic app. Let me also open the child logic app in the other table, sorry, other tab. Oops. Let me open the child logic app.
yes. Let's start the process from the, uh, uh, the parent in this case. As I said in the parent, I'm going to have a file connector which is going to receive a file from my one of the inbound uh, uh, no hybrid um, um, on permis folder. The message will be received, will be validated, and here um, I've got an employee message. I'm going to post this to another logic app. This is the action similar to the uh, the same uh, this similar uh, um, action that I've used in the previous example I've used here, but there is a difference. I'm going to highlight that in a minute. Once this action has been executed, the control will be moved to the child logic app. The child logic app has got an HTTP listener in this case. This is the difference that I was saying you know, I, uh, in the previous uh, example. In the previous example, I had a manual trigger, which allowed me to trigger the whole logic app. In this case, since I have the HTTP listener, I have more control over the response that I, I can return back. Whereas in the case of the previous um, example, I used an HTTP post with the URL endpoint uh, as the access endpoint and posted a message. I received an, an, and I would have received in the background an HTTP 202. Since in this case, I'm using the HTTP listener as the as a as a trigger for the child logic app. I have more control over the response that I'm going to return back. In this example, I'm going to receive a message from the parent, do some process, and an other logic app is going to return the response. I'll go in detail. So I have the listener logic app, which is going to re retrieve a uh, which is going to retrieve a message, pass on to the XML uh, uh, the XPath extractor. I'm I'm extracting an age value. I'll be pausing just to before I show you. I'll be pausing this value uh, from the parent. So I'll be triggering a uh, I'll be dropping a file something like this uh, of, um, an XML file that will be posted to the child process. So what I have to do is I have to integrate the the age of the employee. So I have to access this value. So for that purpose, I've used the Bistoy XPath uh, Extractor API app. As the name suggests, it's a Bistock component similar in Bistock where I ex extract a value from a, by using an XPath. Just simply give you the you know give the XPath um, the XPath that you are interested in. In this case, I'm interested in the value age. Um, if the value if the value that I've extracted in the export uh, is greater than 18, I'm going to execute this HTTP listener, uh, which is going to construct a, a message uh, saying uh, is a minor. Otherwise, I'll be executing this. Uh, if the age is greater than 18, I'll be executing this APA action, which is going to have an age status as major. So the so if if you compare with the other example that I've shown here, in this case, since I have used the HTTP listener, it gives me more control to the response that I'm going to return back. This way, I can implement, um, I can uh, call orchestration-like functionality in logic apps. So I'll show you in detail, so I'll show you. Once the response has been returned, the file connector will come into play. As you can see, the content of the file connector, please spend a while for no, just spend some time on concentrating on the content of the file connector here. The content here is the body of the HTTP. Uh, the body is the body of this action, which is the response which I've returned uh, from this logic app, from any one of these, um, these you know, APA actions. So that's that's the way that we can easily connect, um, you know, easily get the response uh, from the logic app. So the, the, the as you can see here, Microsoft hasn't given a component saying that use this to call a you know, to call a logic app or use this action to call uh, uh, or to start a logic app as they have given in the logic the orchestration they have given explicit call orchestration state and start orchestration state. If you see from the middleware perspective, the integration perspective, the same functionality can be achieved by using the existing uh, you no know, API apps. That that's where uh, the experts like us comes into play. That's where we can implement. That's where the discrete feature of this Microsoft, the microservices feature can be achieved. The same service, but designing together in a different way can be, you know, uh, can enable us to achieve a, a complex business process. That's where the, you know, uh, the microservices architecture comes into play. The same service, grouping together in a different way, I've achieved a different uh, middleware process and integration process. Going back to this demo, let me drop a file. Uh, I'm going to, uh, no, um, um, I'm going to drop this file. I'll open this. I'll show you, show you the value of the age in it. 
Oops, thank you. Thank God, I have to remove this. Yes, I'll be. Sorry. I think I made a mistake. I have to. Hopefully this will work. Let's say the age as 20. Drop in the file into this folder where this file connector is pulling for. If it works correctly, the message will be pulled after a while, after a minute, um, because this connector pulls for a minute. The message will be received from this uh, folder, validated, will make a post to the XML, um, will make an HTTP post for validating or processing or validating the age of the employer. That will get me the response back, whether it is a major or a minor. That response will be moved to this folder. Hopefully, it will happen in a minute time or less than a minute time now. Yeah. This is the folder where I'm expecting the output to come. Yeah, I have this message received just now. If you can see the time frame, open this file and then see what is the content. Once I've shown the content, I'll also show the run history blade uh, to see the status. So it has validated the message. I've, I've received the value as uh, the, uh, the major. Let's do something else. No, why, do, why don't I you know, drop in a file whose value is just 9? Drop in a file. While this is being processed, I'll show you the history of the execution. I think my VM has, bit, has gone a bit slow. This is the one which has executed. This is the execution history. If you go to the ex execution history, I should see uh, once it's been validated, once the message has been validated, the message has been posted to another uh, HTTP action, which is received by my child process. As you can see here, 807 is the time which the child process, the child workflow logic app has been triggered, which executed the logic app, uh, the actions in it. Um, and based on the value, one of the HTTP action action has been executed and the other one has been skipped. So meanwhile, I hope it should have returned the message for the other output. Hopefully over the time the pro the mission should uh, you know, behave much faster. Yeah. 
yeah, I think I had the same file opened. So the message would have been it has been changed from major to minor. I think it's still opening. Okay. Meanwhile, let's move on to the next demo. So we saw two demos. One uh, uh, in the first demo where I've showed how to call an orchestra, start an orchestration, just trigger the orchestra, you know, sorry, trigger the logic app, um, let the logic app to pro this child logic app to proceed, which doesn't hold the parent logic app. In the in the nested logic app, we saw um, the child logic app has been triggered. Um, the parent logic app waited for the response back, and the response has been uh, returned and then handled in the parent logic app for its continuous flow. Let's move on to the third demo where I'm going to show uh, how to chain a logic app um, to the similar way that, uh, that we are familiar in BizTalk server uh, using the publish subscribe um, the way. Um, in this example, I'm going to post a message. I'm going to subscribe. I'm going to let the other process to subscribe. How this can be achieved is by using the service based topics. Service based topics enables you to create a subscription. So from the logic app one, I can post a message to the service bus topics. It has got a, obviously topic has got topic has got the subscription in it. In it, any logic app that subscribe to the to the uh, to that message to the topic will be you know, will be processed. So in this case, in the demo, what I'm going to show, I'll be making an HTTP pose uh, which will which will post a message to my topic service bus topic. Um, I have a logic app too which is defined which will post the response which will subscribe the message that message is going to be dropped into a folder you may have another logic app um, subscribing to the same message but to send a different note send an email it could be a different process you can have n number of subscriptions from the message published by your publisher logic app this is another way of chaining the logic apps together in this case, through a publish subscribe mechanism so that's been um, I, I could able to do it with the help of the service bus too. Uh, no topics again. Service bus being an API component, part of the microservices architecture, we could able to enable it. Let's see this in action. For this, obviously, you need to have service bus created and topics created. I'm not going to go into that detail. Uh, just to give an hint, you can't create this in the new portal. You got to use the manage.azure.com, the older portal, to create the service bus topics. I'll show you. And then provision the API apps, uh, the service bus API app with the connect the connector details in it. I'll show you the logic app perspective once it's been created. Why not show you the the API app which I've configured in the uh, in the new portal? As I said, the action, this number, the sequence of your actions is you've you got to create a, a service bus topic in the old portal and then provision the service bus um, connector, the API app um, in the new portal. While provisioning, you can provide the subscription details, subscription which is the service bus configuration details, topic names. Let's uh, go to the service bus uh, the connector and see how that's been done. Click on the API app host link, not the settings, to the beginners. I think this might confuse. And then all settings. We'll give you the application settings. Coming down, you will see the configuration details. So while, while you provision the service bus connector from the marketplace, you will be providing the uh, the service bus connection string. As I said, this is what you got to create in the old portal. Uh, you will be providing the entity name, which is the um, uh, the topic name, and the subscription, the subscription that you have defined within the topic. Provi give this while provisioning the service bus connector uh, API app. That's it. They will all be here. Once that's been provided. Go to the, um, the logic app, create a one similar to what I'm going to show now. I'm going to repeat this again. I'm going this 
much faster for the people who have not used the service bus or any of this connector it will be a bit tough to follow or uh, you might you might be thinking how can I do this after seeing the demo as I said this demo is is to give idea about how to use this existing API apps to achieve things of you know, things like chaining the logic app in different ways as I said I'm going to write a demo uh, I write a blog spot which will give you the step-by-step -step guidance on where to create this uh, connectors, what are the configurations that you have to do, and then how to use those connectors in this logic app to achieve the demo what I've shown. So this is the parent, uh, which is the publisher logic app. In this publisher logic app, I have an HTTP uh, listener which is going to uh, post a message to this logic app. And I have a listener, I just want to finish this in a right, right way, the publisher in a right way. So I've got this, uh, I'm going to send the response um, to the post that I'm going to make. The response is going to be the same content, by the intention here is I've posted a message to the service box topic for the subscriber to subscribe the message from there. So this is one of the subscribers. You could have subscribers, similar subscriber, subscribing from the service bus topic and following the, I know there are different processes in your action. In this case, I have a subscriber um, which subscribed to the same topic with the same subscription details on and then the connector is going to drop the file into another folder. So I'll show it again. I have an, so a listener is just to post a message, finish the publisher. Publisher, is just, the intention of this publisher logic app is to post a message to the service based topics and the intention of this logic app, the child logic app is to subscribe the message posted on the service bus and then receive it and drop it into a file uh, in a folder, an on is folder. Let's see this in action. Uh, if you have followed my previous um, um, session on Integration Monday or some of the blogs which are already there, even one of mine, I've shown how to implement request response pattern, exactly the similar pattern what I'm showing here. Um, if you have followed, uh, if you have not seen the uh, one of my other videos in Integration Monday, please do watch it where I've shown uh, I know things about how to implement request response pattern, which is exactly the similar way. So I'll be using this. Hopefully this will work. I'm going to post a message to this URL, send a message. So what this has done is it has posted a message to the service bus topic, written the same response back. I've just finished the service bus, uh, sorry, I've just finished the publisher execution. As I said in the logic, in the, in the, in the, this logic app, the subscriber logic app, it would have received the message from the service bus topic, returned the message to, the, to one of the file connectors. The file connector is output from a you know, subscribed LA. Let's move on to this, uh, the output folder. This is just a naming conversion that I found output folder from the subscribed logic app. Yeah, there it is. No, it is not the same file. Let's delete this, maybe. Try one more time, if not, investigate, see what's there in the run status blade. Posted a message. Yes, I've received the message here. The output, you see the output. It's just another analogica which subscribed the same message which I've posted from the HTTP post, the same message. The intention of this logic, this demo, as I've said, is to show Another way of chaining to not chaining the logic app in this by in this case by means of connecting uh, using the publish and subscribe in this way it gives you the loosely coupled and an option you can have another uh, in the other previous examples I've used the HTTP post um, to post either to the HTTP listener URL or to the logic apps access endpoint URL in that way I'm tightly bounded the logic apps which I want to invoke. By this means, by the publish subscribe means, I've published the message to a common MTT which, which gives me the subscription, publish subscription option, which is the service bus topics. The child process received the message, 
it, that could be an n number of child process matching the same subscription could process the message. In, 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 in this case, one too many relationship uh, loosely coupled uh, no, uh, chaining can be achieved. Again, and, and logic app triggered another logic app, but in a different way. In this case, loosely coupled published subscribe way. Okay, now going back to the other demo. Before I move on to the other demo, let me recap things to what I've done. So I've shown three different ways of chaining the logic app. One, by using the start uh, logic app shape where I've just started another logic app. Um, whereas the parent, in this case, parent logic app just triggered the other logic app, made an HTTP post and then carried on with doing its work without waiting for the child logic app to complete its process. In the second uh, example, I've shown a nested logic app where I've tightly coupled the execution of this, uh, the child to the uh, no, in the parent. A parent posted a message to the logic app, to the child logic app, child logic app executed the message received from the parent, returned the response back, parent logic app received the response and dropped the message into another folder, into another folder or carried it process using the, you know, after receiving the response from the child logic app. In the third example of chaining the logic app, I've, I've chained two different logic apps, but in this case, by using a publish subscribe mechanism. So by this means, I could lo I could chain multiple logic apps loosely coupled, in a loosely coupled way. That's all about the um, chaining logic app examples. On my next example, I'm going to show you some of the new features that's been recently added in. Um, logic app, app services uh, has been constantly refreshed with the new features on. Um, um, there are so many connectors been added in and and there are so many new features that's also been added in. One of the ones that's been recently added in is the do while loop. Um, I'll just give you um, the reason. I've, uh, the, that is the reason. Uh, that is the reason for me choosing this example to show it, show it on on this demo. Um, I'll say it in detail in a minute. So what is this do until logic app loop? Do I need to explain anything? No, because do until loop enables us to execute a condition. You know, execution act, action do and a certain part of the action until a certain condition or until a count or a timeout. Um, in this case, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to make an HTTP post to an REST service and I'm going to show uh, an N number of time that is going to post. Um, you, it, may, it may sound similar to the retry policy. Uh, you may want to execute and so what, in what places it can be used. Um, you know, before that, yeah, you may want to execute your AP action for a some times. Let's take an example. Uh, whereas in your org in your organization, um, you have a, an order receiving process, an order processing application, which receives the order, uh, processes the order messages, um, do some validation on the order received order, and then acknowledges back. You are creating a logic app which is going to be part of an invoice message processing. Uh, you can only issue an invoice once the order has been and acknowledged. So your your logic app, as part of your your logic app, you maybe keep checking the order status, uh, the application to see the status of the particular order. The first time when you check it, it may be still in the order received state. The validation would you know the, the time difference could be slightly more. There may be a delay in order becoming a order received to order acknowledged. You can only issue the invoice once it's been acknowledged. So you can constantly check the status of the your order application status. For a, for a certain configured count or a certain time. Um, so once once the order, you can wait until the order becomes acknowledged. Once the order has been uh, acknowledged, uh, you can issue the logic app. No, you can issue the invoice. So you can you are doing some action until certain condition is being met. That is, this, so, this may sound similar to uh, the retry policy. The main difference between the retry policy and do until is that in the retry policy, you'll make sure that you get uh, no, 200 or 400 response um, from the triggered uh, HTTP action. In case if it is an HTTP service that you are making an uh, action no triggering, you either wait for the positive response to come back instead of uh, no 500. If it is a 500 error response, you'd keep retrying it. Whereas in this case, it could be a positive or it could be a negative response based on the condition or the array of conditions. As you can see, this is the syntax. As array of conditions, you can constantly execute a set of action 
until a condition is met or till the count has been achieved. Let's see this in action. For this purpose of demo, I'm using a, um, a utility, um, an interesting utility. I thought this is a uh, this is a chance to also introduce some of the utilities that are widely used within the community. I'm not sure whether it has been um, used in the Logic App community as well. I've seen some of my community members use it wide, you know, extensively. Let's go into this uh, demo, uh, Logic App. I'm going to use an, uh, an utility called Request Bin um, endpoint. So I'm going to make an HTTP post, and uh, I'm going to make a post that in turn is going to post, make a post to this HTTP, um, the endpoint. This is an, um, no, uh, this is just a common utility, an open source utility which you can use for your, you know, internet development purpose. The intention, the objective of this utility is just click on this to get a URL. It creates a, an URL for you just by making simply posting the URL, posting a message to the URL, it keeps track of the messages it has posted. This can be helped to, uh, to, uh, to while during the development process, if you want to track the message that's been posted, number of times a message has been posted to a uh, no, number of times an, an, an action is executed, and if you want to audit that information, this utility can be used in, an, you know, in, a, in a good means. I'm just for this purpose of demo, um, it could be, this demo the do until looping could be easily shown in another way. I thought I'll show this in this day, you know, using this utility. So two means one, I am also introducing another you know, utility to one of the to the community members, and also it also makes the the objective of this demo much simpler. So what I what what I'm going to do is go to, go here, request a URL. This will give you an URL. Just copy this URL, nothing much. Copy this. Come back to the trigger. Give the URL here, and the body is going to be the content of uh, the content what I'm going to post here. Okay, now I have to give the do until uh, condition here. For this, go to the code view. What I what I want to do is I want to post whatever things I've posted using the HTTP listener to this service for five five times. I just want to continuously no more post a message to this uh, service five times. So this is the value that I have to use. So what I'm going to do is um, do until and do the HTTP post to the service until I'm going to get a value from the um, uh, the response from the service uh, greater than zero. Obviously, this is not going to an occur. I'm not going to get the response from the service uh, which is whose body car length is not zero. I just want to this execution. You know, this this is just a dummy uh, condition here. I, I want to make sure this count happens. Um, so I just gave a condition which is not going to happen at all. Uh, so in reality, um, either this expression will happen, otherwise until this condition has been met. Um, as we saw, we had two parameters here in the syntax. One is the timeout, and uh, the other one is the count. They are optional ones. Either you can use timeout or uh, count, or you can use the both. In this case, I've used um, the count. I'm going to execute the second part of the logic app by using this condition. Let's go back to the logic app. Go to the section of the HTTP post. This is the uh, the code for the HTTP post. What I have to do is I have to make sure I'm appending this uh, the do until to this action. What I'm instructing here is I'm inst I'm instructing this action to occur until this condition has been met or or for the count five times. So what I'm with this code what I'm trying to achieve is just make a post to this service five times. I know this condition is not going to meet, so this will the message will be posted five times to the service. I have this code, save this. I 
once being saved, I believe this is the post tag. So I'm going to post this message to this service to this API action, this API action in turn will post a message five times which I can intercept in the in the utility which I've used here. So let me post a message. Let's go back to this. So how we can use this interceptor, how, how you can use this is um, just the URL, just uh, use this and then you know use the query string like this, intercept will enable you to see the actual message, the events happening to this HTTP URL. As you can see, 16 seconds ago, I posted this raw body to this URL. I, this action, by default, this loop execute is going to happen every one minute. So every one minute for five times, I'm going to post a message to this service. We'll come back to the service after a few minutes. You should see, as of now, as you can see, just one message. After a minute, you will see, you'll see um, another message posted. Uh, this is the intention of this logic app. So what is the objective of the, uh, the law? Why did I choose this as an example? Um, one main reason is that, as of now, we've been seeing things to do using the logic app designer. Uh, whenever, whatever I want to do, I used a listener in the ST HTTP action and then um, you know, gave some expressions here. Or if, we, if I wanted to have a condition, I could have a condition like this. But by this means, I've done, I don't, as of now, I don't have a means to uh, you know, add this do until code to this logic app. The one way is the code view and then append to the existing action. So this all, this, what this shows you that it's not just the way, it's not just the logic app designer is a way for you to write, the, uh, write your logic app. You could also extend the functionality of the logic app or an HTTP action from the code view. So there, are, there are more than 60 expressions that are available. If you don't find a space to use them on the HTTP on your logic app designer, the code view is the place for you to extend the functionality of an action. So it gives you an uncontrolled an access to, to an actions. You are not restricted just by means of the designer. Designer certainly helps you to visualize and see things, whereas you can further extend and uh, extend your functionality of an action by extending things or writing things on your on the you know, code view. That's one of the reasons that I've chose to you know show this example because as of now we don't have an option to add this code view or do until option in the designer. Maybe in future or it maybe it maybe it's me who don't know the option. Um, maybe in future you may have another condition. Other, uh, no, other other option here to add, like in repeat over the list, you may have another option to add do until, or they may have an, an allow you to do the do until also in the repeat over the list. So let's go back to the uh, see, see whether it has been posted uh, um, at least more than once now. So as of now, yes, while we speak, two minutes ago we posted this message. Constantly, it's been the message is you know it's 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 kept posted to this URL. One minute ago, this. Forty nine seconds ago, this. If I refresh that you in another eleven seconds, hopefully I should have another uh, eleven seconds ago. Yes, as of so, here is one. As of now, I've received four messages: one, two, three, four. In another uh, 49 seconds, I would receive another message. That's it. So this way, um, I can continuously do an action, do a loop until certain condition is met or a timeout or a count has occurred. Let's go back to the other demo, my final demo. On how to use this, on a use the C Sharp API app. Um, we recently the C Sharp API has, app has been introduced to Logic App um, along with the JavaScript API app. Uh, this was introduced after the um, after the feedback from uh, the Logic App community. Um, what Microsoft did is, or Logic App team did is, they opened a feedback form, um, enabled 
all of us, not just the MVPs or the people within the uh, product group, uh, they led the community to give the feedback. Uh, they rated some of the feedbacks and they've, they're trying to implement uh, the feedback. In uh, it, it shows the direction in which the Logic App team is moving towards. They are more customer focused. Um, they are, you know, your, your feedbacks are valuable to them, so don't assume, assume that, no, I can't make any change to this Logic App, which is still in the build phase. There are so many features have been added in. Your feedbacks are valuable to the product group. Please go back and give your feedback. I'll show you the page where you can give the feedback. One of the feedback was to allow an expression editor, allow an expression editor to execute some expression within the logic app. Um, as of now, the expressions are limited to what has been predefined. Uh, what if it's just to give an another, another analogy um, in the map? Um, how about having a scripting functoid? Uh, we had a scripting functoid. Yes, we had functoids and build inbuilt functoids, or you can create your own functoids, custom functoids as custom API apps. How about having an, an option to execute a C sharp script within the you know, within the map? The similar concept, similar mindset, uh, you know, um, the thinking behind you know, allowing us to create an, an API app where you can execute simple C sharp script um, or a Java script. Um, I'll show you a demo on a simple demo on how you can use this. Um, there are a few things which I've tried. I'll also show things that's that happened. One, yes, before I go into the detail, I'll also show you on how to install this APA app, where to install this, and how to use it with a small demo. In this use case, what I'm going to show is I'm going to post a message to a Logic app, um, and then in the C sharp app and in the C sharp app, app, I'm going to execute this here, the script, C sharp script, standard script, I'm, which I'm going to show. This the script is nothing but a replace function. Recently, no, no, uh, the script is going to look for a word, replace it with another word, um, and then send the response, the replace the response to the response uh, HTTP connector. Let's go back to the um, the logic app. This is the connector which I was talking about, the C-Sharp APA app. Um, as a counterpart, if you are uh, good in JavaScript or if you want to have an option also in JavaScript, you do have the JavaScript APA app. Um, so this is how you can use. I'm going, I'm going to go into the details. So if you go into the documentation for the C-Sharp APA app, it does say that you can either download it from uh, the marketplace or from uh, the you know, GetUp. This is the place, but as by as we speak now, as of now, I can't find this logic app in uh, um, sorry the API action in uh, in the marketplace. It's only available to deploy from you know this website. Um, as you can see, uh, Microsoft started to share some of its API app code uh, on this website. Um, this code is also the code for this C# -sharp API app and the JavaScript API. As we, it's also shared is shared with us. They made it as open source. So this is the place for us to download any of these API apps: C# -sharp scripting API app or JavaScript API app. As I said, as of now, as we as we speak, this API app is not available in marketplace. Maybe it's me that I could not find it, but in the documentation it says. It's also available in market space. If it is not in the market space, I hope it will be coming there in a few days. Yes. How to deploy it? I want to emphasize this point. Warning. One, because when I tried this, there are a few issues I found. When you deploy this logic app, you are, no, even, sorry, when you deploy this API app, you'll click on this, you'll be provided with an options on uh, no, to for you to fill in your logic app resource groups gateways. Um, you would have created your law resource group gateway and the service plans on the lawyer on while creating the API app. I'll show you where you can get this value. In my case, what I've done is I'll give you, I'm, I'm going to share my exam or an experience here, which is pretty dangerous. I'm still trying to investigate what has caused it. Um, you choose the resource group and you will provide the gateway and the service plan. Once I've 
in a, in a minute I'll show you where to get this gateway and the service plan details. You'll provide this. While I was playing with this uh, uh, deploy option, I gave some different values to the service plan uh, name and the gateway name and then I clicked and then proceeded to deploy. What it does is, what it did to my logic apps is, it, it had completely screwed all my previous logic apps. If I show you the ones what it had happened, so when you try, when you deploy this logic app, uh, sorry, when you deploy this APA action from this portal, please make sure that you are giving the right values. Otherwise, it could affect some of, and affect some of the artifacts deployed on, on, the, on the resource group. So what it had done for me is, let's show one of the logic app um, what had happened to me. I normally used to create logic app in, in the same resource group. Since I had given a different, I played with a few of the gateways and then service blank. Once I've tried it, all my pre-existing logic apps um, configuration has, has, been, has gone. The only difference that what I can see from the code view is the gateway code um, has gone slightly misplaced. I'm still finding, trying to find uh, the actual problem, but but I know this, this happened immediately after and now I played around with this deployment from this website. So please make sure that you provide the correct values or I would say, yes, uh, no, create a different uh, no resource groups and then just play with those no resource groups. I've created a resource group and for the de deployment purpose, so if you want to give you, just to show you uh, what is the gateway, you know, where to get the gateway name and the service plan name, if you have already created any APA apps in the past, from the marketplace. Let's take an example of one of the API apps. This is the gateway value. Just copy this gateway value. Um, obviously, the resource group is this. You should know this resource group while you create uh, any API app. Uh, if you're not sure, uh, go to one of the existing ones if you have some existing ones. Otherwise, create something new. Uh, where you will, you will be given an option to create a resource group and everything. The gateway can be created, can be retrieved from the properties of this, they you know, uh, already created a logic app. Get these values, um, give it here, and then proceed with the next wizard. It's nothing then, it will deploy you the logic app into a resource group. Um, I have this, um, I have this uh, configured. Um, as I showed in the demo diagrams, I'm going to post a message to this um, uh, to a HTTP listener which in turn is going to pass a control to the C-Sharp API app. The C-Sharp API app is going to execute this script here. So it has got two values in it. One is the C-Sharp script, the other one is the context, uh, the context in which the execution will happen. I'll just show you what is the script that I'm going to, I'm using there is. Did I copy it? So I'm just executing a simple trigger saying this is something like um, a variable that you define in uh, in C sharp. Uh, where did I uh, in this particular example? I defined it something in the context. I'll show you the context first. Also, that will give you an an example. This is the value that gave in the context property of the C sharp script, and the first line is the value that I gave in the C sharp script. So uh, in the C sharp script text box. So I've defined an object, which is nothing but the content of my trigger. So what I say is, return the trigger, convert that to a string. It took while it took a while for me to identify this, uh, be, uh, because the the error. If there are any failures, uh, I confess the error information are not so great. Hopefully it will get better. Anyway, the API app is open source. You can even make it fine tune it better. So convert this string, uh, convert the content of the um, the trigger uh, um, output into a string, replace the value major to Ashwin. I just chose the value and then I just wanted to replace it with some value. And then return this as an execution, as a response to the HTTP listener here. As you can see here, 
the content of this, uh, the response HTTP listener is the body of the C-sharp API app. The C-sharp API app is the action, this is this API action, content of what has been written to it after executing the C-sharp uh, script will be written to this HTTP as the, as the response back. Let's see this in action. Yeah, let me use the same uh, message. That's it. I posted a message uh, with a word major in it. It's got replaced with a value in it, a uh, value Ashwin. I just chose this as an example here. Let me post and maybe another message saying, I just looking for a word major. It could be anywhere since I'm I'm converting the content of the old body into string and then replace everything with a, um, uh, with a, replace every major, uh, the word major with an Ashwin. Um, the, the, that's going to happen in the C sharp script. There are a few advantages with C sharp. Obviously, yes, you can have any C sharp, uh, you know, the scripts can be executed here. Um, also, um, if I show you the feedback page, this is the feedback page where you can give the feedback. Most people would have seen this already. If you're not, see this place. Until last week, this was the top uh, uh, feedback. So this functionality, this API action was created after the feedback from us, the community. Can we get an ability to have a simple code expression in the logic app? Um, in this logic app, the user wanted, the questioner asked to have some ability to handle with the date time, date time, uh, the functionality. There could be a function where you want to execute a logic app on a certain time. Um, uh, no, obviously, when you trigger a, uh, when you trigger a, a logic app, you can only provide as of now, may in, depends on the action that you use, either minute or hour. Uh, but if you want to still further define it, um, you know, refine, um, that I want to execute this logic app only at certain minute, then you, what you can do is you can have a script. Uh, the script uh, checks the date time um, of, uh, of the trigger. And if it is on the allowed limit, return true which will allow the execution of this logic app uh, and or the C-sharp to execute. Otherwise, uh, you can uh, return uh, the false. You can, when I mean by this, when you use, you can also use the C-sharp as a trigger. In this case, I've just used the C-sharp as the C -sharp API as, as one of the actions. You can have that as a trigger. During the trigger execution, execute the script and uh, check for the date time and see whether the date time matches your criteria to execute the logic app. If not, return false, otherwise return true. So it can be used also as a trigger or also as an API app action. In this case, it's an action. An action also gives a different means of uh, you know, uh, using this. As I show, you know, play with the scripts, you know, um, play with the, you know, receive the message, apply the script that you want to apply, and then before I send out. The example, what I chose might, say, might sound similar to what we do in the scripting functoid. So it's just you know, how you see things. Um, yeah. So that's it, that's it for my demo. Uh, I'll go back to my slide. So, yes, that's it. We saw a uh, few things, um, different ways of, uh, before I, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give a note on what I've uh, done. In today's session, we have seen uh, different means of um, uh, chaining the logic app, three different ways, start a logic app from another logic app, call a logic app, call in the sense, call a logic app from the parent uh, to the child, get the response from the child, handle